All right, as Casey mentioned, welcome to everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. And tonight is a very popular event where we're talking about what else is out there for nurses, jobs beyond the bedside. And we have two amazing hosts that I will introduce in just a moment, um, Nicole Thomas and Dan Weberg. And a couple kind of ground rules or suggestions for tonight so you can make the most out of your experience. Number one, as I mentioned before, please ask questions through Zoom chat. Casey, our amazing community associate, will be triaging these questions and sending them directly to Nicole and Dan when we get to that point. This time is for you all to listen, learn, and connect, not only with the speakers and with the content that they're about to share, but also with each other. That is really, really important to us at Trusted. And if you're not familiar, Trusted is the place for the modern nurse. We have, as you can tell, a variety of really incredible events, both virtual and at some point maybe in the future in person again. And we connect nurses with travel opportunities all across the United States. And you can check out our website for everything from incredible blog content to podcast episodes to events just like this one. Um, and on the third point on this joining us page is this is your opportunity to get inspired to go beyond the bedside. Um, I am not a nurse, but I can tell you from the content that I've worked with Nicole and Dan and Casey, this has some incredible information. So I hope you can take some notes, ask some great questions and get inspired to find your next role beyond the bedside. A couple of things on the agenda. We're gonna go through this welcome. Um, the speakers are gonna talk about the path less traveled, the actual nursing jobs beyond the bedside, non-traditional jobs and where to find them. And then also those locations of where you can actually apply and find these jobs. And then last, we'll circle up with some tips to land a non-traditional job. And so with that, I'm so excited to introduce you to the impeccable and incomparable Nicole Thomas. Hi everyone, again, my name is Nicole Thomas. I am super excited about being here. This is actually my first event of the new year. So I'm so excited to be kicking it off with each and every last single one of you. So thank you Trusted for the opportunity. So just a little bit about me. I am a DNP prepared nurse. I've been a nurse now. I'm a little bit over 15 years going right on 16 years. Um, my background started in med surge. Then I progressed to home health. From home health in 2008, I got into the world of managed care. Um, and that's when my nursing career really began to blossom. That's where I realized that nursing was a business but I was able to utilize that information that I learned about the business side and merge that with, you know, what I had already learned and some things that I knew I wanted to achieve as a nurse to be able to go beyond the bedside, right? Um, so in addition to that, I am also the author of In Health On Purpose, Awakening Your True Calling in the Healthcare Profession. It tells my journey of actually coming into the profession for the first two years, being very, very transparent and honest, not liking the profession at all. I tried to leave the profession three different times, but I really and truly had to find my path as a nurse and more specifically my purpose as a nurse. So I share my story in there, but more importantly, I share the strategies that I utilized to find that purpose because I found so many different nurses were also kind of going through the same thing. In addition to that, I am the co-founder of the Nurse Power Network. We are an online um, community and offline event curation community um, in which we were doing events pre-COVID, but we help nurses to um, dominate, to find, operate, and dominate in their nurse power. And power for us means purpose, opportunity, willpower, willpower connected them um, with resources. So that's what power means for us. And just the last fun fact about me um, is that I actually love reality TV. Don't kill me all, but it's <laughs> my weak spot. So that's just a little bit about me. And I can't wait to share all of the information that I have learned throughout my 16 year career and how I've been able to really and truly make my nursing career work for me on my terms beyond the bedside. So I'm super duper excited about that. Hey everyone, I'm Dan Weberg. Um, I actually work for Trusted. I'm, a, I'm the head of clinical innovation here and I'm one of our clinical leaders. Um, and I also teach at Ohio State University. I helped found their master's in healthcare innovation program, which is actually run out of their nursing program and is for people who wanna take that non-traditional path and create change in healthcare. Uh, there's actually a master's degree in that. Um, I was a student of that same program at Arizona State University. Um, and I ended up doing my PhD in healthcare innovation, um, which is really how do you lead change and create um, new healthcare systems of the future. 
my background, uh, I was a new grad in the ER at UCLA. So I think right out of the bat, I, I didn't take the traditional path of, uh, of going in as a new grad into um, some of the med surge or whatever your faculty kind of tell you to do before you do anything else. So I was a new grad in the ER um, and I've taken the non-traditional path the whole way. So I've done, I've done everything in healthcare except the management track, which I think a lot of people think that's the, that's the only way to go is charge nurse, manager, director, chief nurse. I've done everything around that from um, nursing education and leading a whole, uh, 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 the, the educators in a large health system to being the director of nursing innovation at Kaiser Permanente, where um, I got to meet all the startups across the country and figure out what cool technology they're building and bring it in and, and have nurses kind of play around with it at a big innovation center um, to joining a startup company and advising venture capital teams on uh, acquisition and, and funding of, of healthcare startup specifically around nursing. So um, I, I love the non-traditional path and, and what drove me there is um, I've had bad leaders all the way through my career and it's always made me pivot and realize that there might be something better out there. So um, one of the fun facts about me is uh, I've done an Ironman triathlon, Ironman Arizona in 2013 and I love to brew beer. And as a nurse, I was the only nurse on the founding faculty for the new Kaiser Permanente School of Medicine. And so that was a, a really fun trip to help build out physician curriculum um, from a nursing lens. So uh, looking forward to chatting more about all of that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to get us kicked off. And the first area that we really and truly want to open up in is really truly talk about the pathless travel, right? So when we say the pathless travel, these are the different situations or elements that we really and truly don't think about as a nurse that are opportunities to help us to be able to go beyond the bedside, right? So one of them is being able to incorporate your professional and your personal experiences. So I'm here to tell you, and this is, you know, from my 16 years of, of being a nurse and also just really and truly understanding what my purpose now is as a nurse and that continues to develop every single day and get more and more specific is that every single encounter that I have had throughout my tenure as a nurse, no matter how bad that particular encounter was, it was something that I needed to help me to go beyond the bedside, right? So let me give you a specific example of that. My own personal experience grew up, you know, not really living in the best in, in the best situations, grew up in a vulnerable, what they consider a vulnerable population. I have utilized all of those personal experiences to be able to help me to help um, to actually work with government and community officials here, our mayor, our governor. I helped them to be able to transition in 2011 our Medicaid system to a managed care system, right? So that we can ensure quality access to health care for all Medicaid recipients within Louisiana. That was personal to me, y'all, because guess what? I was once that person who was a recipient of Medicaid, right? When I was coming up, my parents didn't have a lot. And also, honestly, when I very first got out of high school, having a kid at a young age. So those personal experiences have allowed me to go beyond the bedside in those different capacities. So think about that. You know, when you're trying to figure out how do you want to go beyond the bedside? What do you want to do beyond the bedside? Really and truly reflect on those professional and those personal experiences because they were there to teach you a lesson in this journey. The second part of that is get certifications, right? Get as many certifications as you can get, especially if it's a certification that the organization that you are working for is willing to pay for, right? And here's why you want to do that. One thing they can never take away from you is that certification. So even if you leave that organization, that belongs to you. And what that certification does, it starts to position you as a subject matter expert, also called a SME. And you being a SME or being a subject matter expert is going to really and truly push you and propel you forward so that whenever someone thinks of, you know, innovation and technology, who are they going to call? Dan is the man. We need to call Dan for that, right? Because he's the subject matter expert. So when Whenever your supervisor is coming to you with another opportunity to get another certification and you're like, oh God, I don't want to do this again. This is too much work. Think about the end game. Think about how you can take that and really leverage that in your career to be able to do what it is that you want to do beyond the bedside. 
The third thing that is really important for us to do if we're talking about the, the past less travel is to get an internship. Nurses all the time think that, and people think that, you know, internships are for the young college kids who are trying to figure it out and they don't really know. No, they are not, right? I was quick to pick up the phone and call the director for the State Department of Health here to say, hey, I'm a registered nurse. I know you all are not hiring. I just really and truly want to learn the ins and outs of community health from a state perspective. I was very, very intentional in that because I knew that I wanted to learn the ins and outs so that when it was time for me to go beyond the bedside and start working on community programming, building those different programmings. I had the inner workings of what was going on. You don't have to pay me. That's fine. I don't need you to pay me because in the long run, I'm going to get paid for that. I'm thinking long term in the end game and not immediate gratification and satisfaction. All right. So get an internship, even as a nurse on your days off. The beauty of being a nurse is that we can work out 312 and we out for the week, right? Take those other four days and be intentional with those days so that you can go beyond the bedside. And one of those is getting an internship in an area of interest that you may have. The fourth thing is to look beyond what is in front of you. A lot of times, and this is, this is challenging for us as nurses, right? You know, we're trained and programmed as nurses, honestly, black and white. This is the policy. This is the procedure. This is what we're going to follow. We don't go to the left. We don't go to the right. And so what that does is it takes away a little bit of our creativity. So we're only able to see directly, you know, what's in front of us, what this policy says, or what this, you know, particular document may say, or even what we see right now for our career. We may be in our career in a place where we're feeling stuck. We feel like this is it. You know, I'm just only going to work three twelves a week and have patients on the call light all hours of the day, families, you know, screaming at me at the nurse's station, doctors throwing chart at me, and you may think that that's it, but it's not. I want you to really and truly get into your creative mode as much as you can and tap into that and visualize where you see yourself beyond that particular situation in 10 years, okay? And I want you to take every single limit off of yourself, every single thing that you think you cannot do, every single thing that is stopping you from doing what you want to do right now, I want you to look beyond that, right? Because every situation is going to be a temporary situation. I know it doesn't seem like it at the moment, but it is temporary. And when you allow yourself to look beyond that, you've already taken the first step to getting on the path to start to go beyond the bedside because you see more for yourself. You see a different path and you'll start exploring what path is specific to you. Awesome. So let's, uh, thanks for that. Those are awesome tips. And I agree with them. I think it's, it's breaking out of what you think you are supposed to do and really thinking about what you want to do. So we're going to go through a few buckets of jobs that may be um, non-traditional that you may have heard of, but don't really know a whole lot about just as examples. Um, and then uh, we'll take some questions, I think, right after that. So um, let's dive in here. So the first one that you may have heard about but don't really know what it, they do is nursing informatics. So this is this one's near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm not a formal nursing informaticist. There's entire degree programs, masters and PhDs in nursing informatics, but um, I, I've dabbled uh, and actually got my start in playing around with some of the, the data and things before electronic medical records were actually kind of ubiquitous across the entire country. So what is a nursing informaticist? So they're really the translators between nursing practice, what we do every day, and how technology uh, interfaces with us. And that's everything from how we use systems like our beloved electronic medical records to wearable devices, to patient monitors, to the IV pumps. Nursing informatics are the nursing brains behind um, how those things come to be and how they're rolled out and how the data that those uh, devices uh, create actually gets back into some form that allows nurses uh, taking care of patients to make decisions off them or, uh, or look through that data. So typical jobs that a nurse informaticist have, um, you can be just a nurse, not just, but you can be a nursing informaticist, which um, when I spent my uh, about seven years at a large organization, Kaiser Permanente, we had a number of nurse informaticists and an entire team that really looked at a, at a system level uh, 
through not only optimizing the different flow charts and flow sheets and, and documentation pieces, but digging into the problems that our nurses were experiencing. So things like um, the, the, there was a, alarm fatigue. So the number of alerts and alarms you hear every day in a shift is overwhelming. And there was data showing that it was actually impacting patient care and nurses were starting to ignore the alarms. There were so many. And so the nurse informaticist actually led a project to reduce the number of alarms that were triggered uh, by 33% without actually impacting any of the um, negative outcomes. So we didn't miss any critical alarms. We didn't miss any patient care issues that the alarms may have flagged, but we were able to reduce the, the alarms in general. So those are the type of things that a nurse informaticist can do um, because they're, 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 they speak the language of data and technology and they translate it back into what we do every day. The next one, which you may be more familiar with, is kind of that EMR expert or that EMR optimization person. So they're looking at nursing workflows and trying to translate what we do every day into electronic medical records. I know we love and hate them, uh, that kind of role, it, but the nurse informaticist really has a lot of control over that. And um, this, this shows up in a couple of ways. It's, you can do this at a health system or a hospital uh, or a clinic or, or whatnot, but you can also do this for the EMR vendors. So the, the Epic and, and and Cerner and Meditech all hire registered nurses to come build these systems out. And so that's kind of a non-traditional way to uh, go to the tech side of things, but still use your nursing knowledge. And then a lot of nursing informaticists are tied at the hip with quality leaders. And so they're looking at a macro level, falls, hap use, you know, um, central line infections, all the things that we uh, hear about in our huddles every day. The nurse informaticist really looks at the macro level data and tries to figure out, are there solutions that we can implement from a data perspective in order, or a, a technology perspective in order to, to help shore those up. So those are all, all things you may have heard about. But what is like the next level? So like, where, what are some of these roles? You know, I'm gonna be a nurse and informaticist for a while, then what? Well, you can be a CNIO. So that's a chief nursing informatics, informatics officer. So that, that nurse would be um, up in the C-suite level potentially, uh, or the board level of an organization, really uh, advocating for nursing practice to be enabled through technology. And there's a number of CNIOs out in the world. Um, CNIOs also hold roles at uh, technology companies, which is the next role. So Microsoft, um, IBM, uh, Amazon, all have nurse leaders, nurse executives within their ranks. Uh, and, and so that's a role that nurses can play. You can be literally the, the, the chief nurse of all of Microsoft and go around the world creating solutions for healthcare practitioners, and that's a real thing. Um, you can also go into innovation. So this is kind of where my career landed me. Um, I dabbled in, in technology and informatics and I got to work with startup companies and big data and Apple and Google and Salesforce and, and figure out how to take technology and actually put it into practice to optimize nursing workflows. And so you can do that innovation stuff. Um, and then you can also, a simple thing that you can do, and this is how I got my start, just become a, a super user in the technology that you're really excited about. In the ER, I was the first nurse to bring in the Palm Pilot 3 to use it as a drug reference um, using Hippocrates on the unit. And I got all my nurses to, to figure out like how, that it was awesome. Um, and we all started carrying around Palm Pilots within a few months. So you could be a super user related to that. Or in nursing school, I got really interested in the, in the simulation lab and taught myself how to program Sim, uh, Simman. And that led to consulting and, and speaking and, and helping other schools figure out how to implement simulation labs all around kind of technology and data. So that's that's just another role that you don't have to have a formal job description around this. Even if you're just a super user, that starts that path to being a content expert that people seek you out. Where you can find these jobs, HIMS, it's the Health Information Management Society. It's the largest trade show in all of healthcare for technology. There's tons of roles there and they have a ton of vendor related roles as well. LinkedIn, I'm gonna say that over and over. LinkedIn is like the source for non-traditional healthcare jobs. Um, ANIA and AMIA are just two different uh, kind of aspects of a similar uh, focus. ANIA is the American Nursing Informatics Association, and AMIA is the American Medical Informatics Association. Both are professional organizations for informaticists. The next one is, and yes, and I've seen some comments. So you can actually get uh, MSNs uh, in informatics and PhDs as well in informatics. So just uh, FYI on the education front. So health policy is another one where people are like, well, what a health, what's a nurse policymaker? I don't know what that means. 
So this is someone who takes your strong background in nursing, uh, in nursing practice and translates it into what you need to change at a policy level within state, local, and national governmental affairs. So um, there's a number of ways you can do this. Uh, and, and if you're looking for like an entry to get excited about this, um, the American Nurses Association state chapters do a really good job of providing opportunities for nurses to go interact with legislators. So that's one avenue to go do that. Um, but you can, you can be a nurse policy expert within local communities like Nicole talked about where she was literally calling you know, the, local, the local officials and saying, how do I learn about how this happens in a community? Um, and you advocate for what you know about patients. So this can be um, things as big as, you know, trying to push uh, the state of California to be a compact licensure state. So it makes it easier for nurses to come back and forth within the state um, to local things that may be impacting communities where we need to get better access or better clinics into, into certain areas of the community. Those are all parts of advocacy that our health policy nurses take on. You can do this through community organizations, whether that's a healthcare organization or not. It could be a church. It could be your local nonprofit that you're on the board of. You can advocate as a nurse for policy changes within all of these organizations. And then you can, you can do research and um, academic work related to health policy, uh, looking at the trends and the data um, and really doing rigorous research to figure out what needs to change in order to make a better healthcare system. And this shows up in things like um, the Affordable Care Act and other large legislative um, decisions related to healthcare or even the vaccine rollout. I mean, that, that's one top of mind right now. So what are the next level jobs? Well, you could have that awesome job, and I know you're all chomping at the bit, to be a regulator at your local board of nursing. And it's not as boring as it sounds. Um, it's actually really kind of interesting. Uh, one of my mentors was the president of the uh, Arizona Nurses uh, Board of Nursing. And they have an amazing job. They interface directly with the governor um, and, and help graph policy. They protect the public. They also um, work with nurses to make sure that our practice is relevant, our scope of practice is up to date, and we're advocating so that nurses stay relevant in the healthcare as a role within the healthcare um, organization. You can drive large policy changes like at Amazon. Amazon uh, it has a whole lobbying uh, you know, arm of, that's related to healthcare where they're trying to break down the barriers related to telehealth. And so you can become an advocate within an organization that um, looks to change policy in order to make it easier to deliver healthcare. Um, you could draft legislation and you can, you can even write letters uh, and, and, and support to Congress people related to issues that you have. Um, and we do have nurses in Congress. And so Representative uh, Underwood, I believe is a nurse. And, um, and so we need more nurses out there looking out for our people because we are, we are directly connected to the care that's provided. So we need more nurses to take that leap as well. Where can you find these jobs? City websites, county health departments, and then I'm going to say it again, LinkedIn has tons of roles like this, and there's startup companies even hiring uh, health policy experts in order to help them shape the landscape so they can deliver the care they want. And so one of the other areas um, that, you know, nurses can actually work in is a wellness nurse. And so a wellness nurse is, you know, an individual whose primary purpose is to really and truly help other individuals to set their physical and their mental health goals that they may have, as well as their emotional health goals. And we do that by helping them to develop a specific plan, right? So, you know, what's the typical job? What is a what, wellness nurse do? Well, they typically are going to have a health and wellness job. And so where are the different places that they can practice? A lot of wellness nurses, they either open up their own practice. You can open up your own wellness practice. Again, you do need to look at your state board of nursing regulations to see, you know, what the policies, the rules, if you need any other type of collaborating providers and things of that nature, every single, you know, um, state is going to be different. Um, so they can also open up IV hydration practices. This has been a huge one that has been on the rise over the last three to four years, especially throughout this pandemic. I've seen a lot more individuals and especially nurses opening up IV hydration practices because more people now are really, really in tune with their overall health as it relates to their immune system and things of that nature. 
also holistic health, right? Um, there's a ton of individuals out there that are really and truly like myself looking at health from a 360 degree perspective. And we want more holistic health, mind, body, and soul. And so we as nurses, what do we do when we go through nursing school? These are the things that we are educated to be able to do. What do we do when we actually graduate from nursing school? We're actually providing health. We're doing wellness. We're doing all of these different types of things in various settings, whether you're working inpatient, whether you're working outpatient in a provider's office and patients are coming in for the general, general wellness you know, visits. These are already skills and things that we have that we as nurses can actually leverage. OK, so where can we go about finding these different roles? Well, hospitals hire wellness nurses all the time. So you can definitely go within the hospital system and work as a wellness nurse. Multiple clinics also ha um, have wellness nurses. One of the um, other the most important ones, though, is private organizations. You guys will be surprised how many private organizations such as Disney World right? Such as um, health wellness nurses for football teams, NFL, NBA, all of these different private organizations, guess what? They hire wellness nurses and it can be twofold. Number one, the wellness nurse can be contracted through them in which we as the nurse are working independently as a 1099 person for that particular private organization and providing wellness services to specifically their actual employees. Google does this all the time because they are invested into their employees because they understand that a well employee is going to be a performing employee, right? So they have invested into their employees. The other spectrum of that is that a lot of these private organizations may hire it for their customers base. So for example, Disney World. Disney World actually hires wellness nurses, wellness nurses for whenever they have visitors that come. If they have a patient that, you know, may fall and scrape their knee or have a really bad cut on a ride or something like that. Guess who's going, guess who they're going to bring them to? They're going to bring them to the wellness nurse. How cool could it be to say that I am a nurse and I work beyond the bedside at Disney, right? So think about that. And this kind of goes back to when I talked about, you know, traveling those paths, you know, the paths less traveled, really and truly, really and truly looking beyond where you are right now and get creative with things, guys. There is a space for a nurse every single place. And so this is definitely one of them. This is my absolute favorite because this is my baby. Managed care. I don't know if you all have been paying attention to the healthcare climate over the last 10 years. Managed care is taking over. Okay, in so many different aspects. Managed care can be, you know, whether you're a pre in the pre-certification, whether you are doing the inpatient, whether you are doing the outpatient, whether you're doing, you know, with a private hospital, whether you're doing it with an insurance company, whether you're doing it on a governmental level. Managed care is really and truly a healthcare delivery system that is organized with the purpose to manage the cost, the utilization, and we want to make sure that we have quality access to healthcare for all individuals. Okay, and again, I just broke down some of those different levels of managed care because it is such a big system. So, what are some of the typical jobs when we think about managed care? Our case managers our care managers, we really and truly can use those two, you know, interchangeably. And then also our clinical resource managers. These are going to be the typical jobs when we think about managed care and we think about nurses that are working in this particular area. So what are some of the more that nurses can actually do, you know, beyond this? Entrepreneurship, right? I know somebody on this line is thinking, what can I do with my nursing skills as an entrepreneur? right? This is it right here. There are a ton of opportunities for nurses to actually open up consulting firms in which they are helping to drive the managed care, i.e. you're looking at one. So in that, what I'm able to do is work with FQHCs, federally qualified healthcare systems, because of my expertise and the knowledge that I have acquired over my tenure as a case manager to be able to contract with those FQHCs to go in there, look at their current quality department, look at their quality improvement processes, compare that to CMS, which is the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, to say this is the gap. This is where we are. And if we don't fix this, CMS is going to come down on you and nobody wants CMS to come down on them because then you're messing with their money. 
right? And this is all because I'm able to make them understand from a quality perspective. How many of us as nurses are always advocating for our patients? We're always advocating for the best possible quality care that this patient can receive, right? So again, these are skills and things that we already have as nurses that we can continue to develop and build up in. We can also do direct case management practice. Direct case management practice is working in those various settings, as I indicated, um, and we're going to go ahead and go into what are the locations you can find these, like your insurance companies, your, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield, your People's Health, your um, other managed care organizations for Medicare. There's so many that are out there, right? So we can definitely work in the insurance company capacity. Also, your state agencies. Who are they looking for to help them say, if we have a Medicaid system here, which every single state does, how can we get this under wraps, number one? Like they told me, Nicole, if we don't do this, we're going to go bankrupt. We have to find a way to save some money because we can't, because right now there's no management of the care. But we also need to do that to ensure that all of our patients have the, util the access to the quality care and we have appropriate utilization of the services, all right? So again, your state agencies is another place. The last one, again, is an independent consultant. And you can do this on various different you know, platforms. When I talk about being an independent consultant, even if you don't want to open it up as full-time entrepreneurship, you can always lend your expertise to a different organization. You know, it can be a small healthcare clinic that is really and truly looking for, you know, how do we do this from a quality perspective with the knowledge from the nursing community? There are several physicians for um, several physical therapy offices out there, right? Most physical therapy, you know, therapists, they don't really have nurses in there, but there have been tons that they still need the input and the mind of a nurse because we are amazing. Everybody needs a nurse, right? Right? And so they may not want to hire you full time, but they may need your consulting services. How do we go about doing this and doing that? So that's another opportunity where you can actually find those jobs. And then like Dan said, guys, LinkedIn. LinkedIn has been a game changer in my career and making meaningful and impactful connections and, and building those relationships with people that have, you know, reached back out to say, hey, you know, we have this opportunity. We would love to discuss this more with you. So just keep that in mind as well. LinkedIn, LinkedIn. When everybody get off here today, you go and get on LinkedIn and we're going to talk about that. All right, guys. So we have a few questions in the chat. Um, Dan, I think this is this one's going to be directed towards you. Um, Kay is interested in knowing what she can do to uh, work as a nurse informatist. Uh, what would help her get that type of position? Um, and she was also wondering if there's any transferable skills that uh, she can use to help build her resume since she hasn't worked on the tech side. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to work on the tech side to get an informatics originally. Um, a lot of the informaticists that I know actually started as um, nursing super users within their units or within their hospitals related to electronic medical records. So they helped do trainings, they helped run, you know, the new hires through different things. They just, they became that super user and that's an awesome way to jump into it. And then you can formalize that by going to, you know, masters or there's certificates in informatics, there's masters in informatics, there's higher degrees in informatics. So you could look at planning on going through those programs as a longer term strategy. Um, and, uh, and those are probably the two best ways to go about it. And um, the more you interact with technology, the more you use it, you, you know, you look up things on your phone, you look up things on the computer, the more you become kind of that expert in figuring out where to get the right information. Those are great skills to be able to jump into um, the data and informatics side. If you really want to build up some skills, you could take like Khan Academy courses in statistics and, uh, and some other things is kind of foundational skills that would help you if you uh, had a long-term career in informatics, but really just being a super user is the best, uh, best start. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate that. Um, Nicole, what certifications do you need for the nursing wellness, um, IV hydration or wellness? So there aren't any actual certifications that you need for IV hydration. 
um, for that particular, you know, portion of wellness, because wellness can be very, very big. There aren't any um, necessary certifications. However, you do need to look at your state board of nursing requirements to see, you know, do you have to have a collaborative physician? If you don't have to have a collaborative physician, as we know, not all states are yet full authority practice states. So you do need to, um, you know, really and truly research that. Again, I always say, even if you don't, um, have to have one, especially when you're going in IV hydration, because you are still technically administering medications. It's still always good to have a provider, you know, on board that you can call to ask, you know, certain questions and say, hey, I'm thinking about this with the patient that I have that I'm doing an IV drip on or something like that. But again, there's no specific certifications on it. And there are a ton of amazing people that offer more insight on how to build those practices. Okay, thank you so much, Nicole. Um, this one also is probably for you, or actually both, Dan, both you and Dan. Um, where do they advertise those positions for wellness nurses at Disney World or other places? I guess it's kind of unusual locations. I mean, I've seen them advertise on the site. So like yeah, you, can, that's about to yeah, you can go to yeah. Disney's website. They all have, <laughs> just type in nurses, your search word. Yeah. Um, I, I had a colleague when I was at UCLA in the ER, Her, she was a part-time nurse at, at Disneyland and she ended up leaving UCLA to go work full time in, in the urgent care at Disneyland. So yeah. uh, I would check the sites first. Apple's the same way, Google's the same way. You can kind of find some of those things there. But then LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn also has a ton of yeah. these things. And they're not always called like, Disney nurse, you kind of have to use some other search terms, but they're there. Yeah. And another, um, and okay. I echo every single thing Dan said, that's the top two places they would find that on LinkedIn, one tip that uh, trick that I would, you know, offer to everyone. If you go on their website, kind of find out who their HR person is. You know how most websites will kind of tell you certain people that may be like the director of human resources or the director of X, Y, and Z on their website. Go to Disney World's website, find out who that person is, switch back over to LinkedIn, become friends with that person or make a connection with that person rather on LinkedIn from there, their other connections are going to pop up as potential connections for you. And you can find out who at that particular level you need to contact and start building a relationship with them. Don't go straight and send them a message and say, hey, I want to come work for you, right? Build that relationship first. But that's another way you can utilize LinkedIn to find out who it is. Because like Dan said, it may not always say wellness nurse at Disney World. That's great advice. That might also apply to some of the next questions I have for you. Um, we have a couple of nurses who are having difficulty breaking into case management um, or managed care and with their current experience. And do you have any recommendations for them trying to break into that field? Yeah, so the first thing that I would say do is to look for opportunities within your current you know, organization that you're working for. To go into case management, you do not have to have any certifications. If you can't find any within your inpatient facility, almost every single insurance company right now is looking for more nurses in their case management program. Why? Because COVID-19 is on a the rise. These insurance companies have certain policies and laws and things that they have to meet. They have certain quotas that they have to meet. And what do they ultimately want to do? They want to find a way to decrease their costs, right? Because they're an insurance company. So almost every single insurance company that I know of right now, United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield, they're all hiring for nurses right now because they have an influx of what? Patient claims coming in from various um, perspectives, inpatient, outpatient, the COVID vaccine just rolled out. They need people to authorize those particular claims, right? So that's another avenue right now. And again, you do not have to have a certification in case management to start in case management. That's the way right literally now you can start to get into case management if your organization you're currently at does not have op any opportunities right now. Okay, thanks, Nicole. Just for uh, the sake of time, let's continue on and then we'll have another chance to ask questions um, at the end of the presentation. Hey, Casey, can I just add one thing before we- Yeah, absolutely. I just saw some of the, I got some um, direct questions as well in the chat. And um, one of the things was, what if I'm um, a very experienced nurse? Physically, I'm not up to staying in the ICU, but I still wanna do some cool stuff. I would check out like EICU type roles or the virtual care type roles where you can still use that amazing nursing knowledge, but you don't have to do the physical aspect of nursing. And there's a ton of those as well. There's entire health systems that have electronic ICU oversight where, you, where the ICU nurses are in front of multiple computers watching uh, patients from all over the, the country. And so those are just some other roles that, you know, not all of this has to be uh, direct patient care as well. 
That's really cool. I have not heard of that yet. So I'm learning a lot this a lot tonight as well. Perfect. Right. Um, so we're going to talk about some non-traditional locations here for jobs. Um, and uh, so these are going to be sort of those those off the off the super off the radar roles. So we talked about some of the ones that I think you uh, you may have heard about but didn't really know a whole lot about. Now we're going into ones that you probably have never heard about um, and where you might find those and some tips to getting them. So I think Nicole, you're up first. All right. So think outside the box. Remember, I started this with saying, look beyond what's in front of you right now. So some out of the box opportunities for nurses is a cannabis nurse, right? And so a lot of these nurses work in different oncology and chemotherapy clinics. They're also starting to be hired by pharmaceutical companies, right? Because more and more oncologists are starting to prescribe different types of cannabis agents for their patients that may be suffering with certain types of cancer and other diseases. We're also starting to find more and more states that are coming on board with legalizing the use of cannabis for medical reasons, right, and other reasons as well. So that has opened up a lot more, you know, spectrum and opportunity. And this is going to be, I'm telling you all now, this is going to be huge within the next 10 years. I can only see where this is getting ready to go. And so that's definitely an opportunity. Another one is a flight nurse, right? Um, paramedics, your hospitals. Again, you, you have, for this one here, you must complete the Department of Transportation Air Medical Program to be a flight nurse. But there are a lot of opportunities for nurses, you know, for when the patient needs to be transport, transported via the helicopter to another facility, whether it's in the same state, a different state for medical reasons that are real, real emergent, then they'd have to go with the flight nurse. So this is something else that is also off, you know, off the wall. Also some of your private airlines, right? Your American airlines, your Delta airlines, for certain flights, they actually employ flight nurses. Again, you do have to have that certain, um, complete that program, but they do hire flight nurses for that. FedEx they actually hire flight nurses. FedEx has a whole fleet of airplanes that they are you know, flying back and forth for different reasons. A lot of sometimes people are on those and they do hire flight nurses for those. Again, we talked a little bit about the theme park. That was one that when I found out about that, y'all, I was like, I'm quitting my job today. Disney World, sign me up. Mickey, where you at? We're going to hang out every single day, right? Um, so theme park. There's a theme park nurse. Disney World, Universal Studios, Disneyland, every single theme park that's in Orlando, Florida. If you want to go live in Paris, there's a Disney World in Paris, right? So think outside the box again. And then this is also one of my favorite, and I say this all the time. I wish I would have kind of did some of this. I wish I would have did a lot of things because there's so many opportunity. Sports medicine nurses, right? So you're kind colleges, your professional sports team, the SEC, which is also college, the ACC, which is your college, you know, the different divisions that they have, the NFL, the NBA. Every time we see somebody get hurt on the field, like my beloved Drew Brees, who just got hurt, he's now back because I'm Louisiana, go girl. So I'm a Saints fan. But when they took him back to that, you know, to the locker rooms and to the tent, who do you think was in there with him? He had a nurse somewhere in there on his team, right? They do have their whole entire sports medicine team, but a nurse is there on that team. And these are all of the opportunities that await us as nurses that we just have to think outside the box about. Again, think beyond your current situation and where you are. This is why I say think about your professional and your personal experiences, those things that you really, really love, because I bet you somewhere in that you can find a job as a nurse. I can almost guarantee you that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I know we're seeing some things in the chat too. And I'm seeing a theme of like, well, I'm a psychiatric nurse or I'm a XYZ nurse. Where could I find my next role? The great thing about nursing is you're not locked in. So don't bucket, buck, uh, bucket yourself into a role that you think has to be in your specialty that you've chosen. Change specialties, go experiment with other things. And a lot of the roles we're talking about don't require you to have any specific specialty behind it. Um, and so don't don't lock yourself into those, those type of things. But just to kind of, there, there's a lot of roles in tech. I mean, 
I work at a startup, at Trusted Health, which is a technology company, and I'm a nurse, and actually 20% or more of our company is actually nurses. Casey's a nurse and runs our social media work. So there's a lot of cool roles within tech, um, and I'll just talk about some of the big four, right? So Amazon. Amazon is quickly building up a telehealth platform, not only for their employees, but they'll deploy it out into the world. So you may have prime health uh, very soon. They're hiring nurses because they understand the business of healthcare. They know that a physician is a very expensive uh, person to put at the front door of any health system. They're hiring nurses and nurse practitioners to be that front door into their into the healthcare system, which is awesome. And so you can check that out. They're doing some direct care as well. And they are all about informatics. If you know anything about Amazon Web Services, it basically is the backbone of the internet. They literally have nurse informatics working for them. Um, and before I chose Trusted, I was interviewing with them for, for some roles. It's pretty cool what you do. You literally fly around the country, meet with um, some of their partners and figure out solutions to some of the world's most intense problems and use your nursing brain to do that. Google is all about data. They're integrating with Epic. They're integrating with healthcare systems. They have tons of data and they need nursing brains. Um, they have over 500 people within Google Health, um, a division of, of Google itself that's run by the past uh, CEO of Cleveland Clinic. And so they have tons of health jobs. In fact, YouTube uh, recently had a job for a health content, um, health, health, and medical content expert lead or something. And they wanted a nurse in the job description. And so those roles are out there. Um, Apple is high, now Apple, I don't know if you know this, but Apple actually has clinics within the Apple locations, the major Apple, uh, Apple locations throughout the world. They provide direct care and they hire nurses into those. Kaiser was one that helped staff some of those, but they also have independent nurses that are on their teams to provide direct care at the big Apple like UFO that's in Silicon Valley. Um, and they are also big into informatics and data. They are integrating with every single medical record right now and doing the whole wearable thing with the iWatch. They need nurses to translate that data so that um, um, they can do something with it and help engineers design the products of the future. And finally, Microsoft, I mentioned it before, Microsoft has a global head of healthcare that's a nurse. Her name is Molly McCarthy. Um, I'm interviewing on, on our podcast uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks. And she's amazing. And she leads the entire Microsoft organization in the healthcare space. And they're building out solutions for vaccination tracking for communities to how health systems communicate using Microsoft Teams and other things. So just these really cool roles where your nurse brain and the understanding of the healthcare system actually is being used to develop the future of the entire system. And so um, I would say just break out and, and, and look at these organizations because they're doing some really interesting stuff. And uh, a lot of of the jobs, and I've been searching through these as we are prepping for this, a lot of them say uh, they want an RN or RN or MD uh, in those roles. So I, I think the more we get RNs there, the better. So um, we're going to talk now about some tips to land your non-traditional job. I know we've gone over a few of them in the questions, um, but let's, uh, let's jump into this. So I think Nicole and I will I'll tag team this, but um, networking, honestly, like we've said it over and over, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile yes. or a trusted profile, but a LinkedIn profile more, more, uh, <laughs> more importantly. I like that, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> got to plug it, but you got to have it. I, I seriously... Every single opportunity that I've ever got in my entire career has had some connection back to a connection I had on LinkedIn. And that's me posting stuff about what I'm interested in or just connecting with people. Build your network. It is the number yes. one thing. So, Nicole, I know you have some tips here, too. Yeah, I, I just want to reiterate what Dan said. And I know that this sounds cliche when I'm getting ready to say. Y'all probably already know it. But your network does determine your network. If you don't take anything else from this on how can you, you know, the tips on what you can do when you leave here, network, network, and then you network some more. You network with their network, right? Um, so I just wanted to reiterate that. Also, attend conferences, right? This is an opportunity, again, for you to do what? Network. So when they have different conferences, almost every single one of us that has ever worked at any inpatient facility, even if we don't like our job, and I tell people this all the time, Take advantage of the opportunities that you have there now because they're going to help you to go beyond the bedside, right? So almost every inpatient facility that we work at, they always have these different symposiums. They have different, you know, mini conferences that they're putting on. They have their research day and they're inviting who? Us as the nurse to come and attend those particular events that they're having in-house. 
go to it, right? You don't know who's going to be there in the room that you can get a business card from, that you can learn something from and connect with at a later time. So attend conferences. It doesn't have to be these big old large conferences, which we aren't having right now, you know, anyway, in the world of COVID. But just think about those small conferences, those small symposiums that are probably already going on right now inside of the organizations where you work. Attend events not related to nursing. I love my nursing community. I love every single nurse out there. But one thing I have to tell you about nurses, we stick together and we come together in very, very strong and large cliques. But what that does is that limits our information because we aren't networking with you know, other professions and individuals that can introduce us to some of these out of the box type of individuals where we can find these other nursing jobs. I'm very, very intentional that when I network, I would traditionally do two to three conferences a year that was specifically for nurses and everything else I wanted to network where the attorneys were going to be at. I wanted to network where I knew, you know, the politician um, networking events were because they aligned and I needed their audience for my community building because I knew that this is where I can get in the door and meet some of their connections. All right. So attend non-nursing networking events. And y'all, it's on here. I don't know how many more times we can say this and for me, I'm an educator, right? So typically when the teacher says something more than two or three times, the students know that it's going to be on the test. You've heard this multiple times tonight because honestly, guys, and I'm not just saying it, LinkedIn has been a game changer for me, right? So if you do not have a LinkedIn profile, get off of this meeting tonight and go and get you a LinkedIn profile. That's literally your homework. I'm giving you an assignment to get your LinkedIn profile up and running if you have one, but it's just not active, it's stagnant. You're going to start sending out some new connections and really and truly making some meaningful connections with people starting tonight. Anything else you wanna add, Dan? No, I think that's the big thing. And, and I think just getting out there, writing blogs, writing articles, taking advantage yeah. of those type of things has also been really great. Uh, I know we only have a few minutes left, Casey. So I think we've kind of covered most of this stuff. Um, I don't know if we want to jump to questions or uh, what's your thoughts there, Casey? Um, I think if we just want to cover this last slide, then we can jump to questions just to make sure. Uh, if you know, and um, just so everyone knows, looking at this really quickly, um, we've already done quite a few events around resumes, cover letters, all of that, which I really encourage you all to attend. We're also doing another event. What? Nicole, what date is that? Is it February 17th? Yes, I was going to mention that at the end. Um, okay. Not to take away <laughs> from time from questions, but just to let everyone know, this is the first of three events in the What Else Is Out There series. Next week, we have an event on advanced nursing careers with advanced education, and Nicole Thomas will be joining us with Beth A. Brooks. And then we have one more at the end of this month on the 27th, which is about nursing careers on the fringes, so those really out there roles that you could look for um, in your nursing career. And then, as Casey said, on February 17th, you can go to trustedhealth.com slash events, I believe. Um, you can tool around and find out what we have coming in. But on the 17th of February, we have an event that's um, kind of how to market your nursing career, market your nursing experience. So taking what you've known and crafting it into the language and the resume that you might need to go to something beyond the bedside or entrepreneurial. So that's going to be a really great event um, hosted by Janine Kelbach. So we have so much in the works, but those particular ones coming up, I think really are in the same vein that we're talking about tonight. Absolutely. Um, I'm looking at these questions. I've seen a few repeat ones, just a, um, things I can address really quickly. Uh, we, I had a couple of nurses asking about cruise ships and in, in the entertainment industry and they nursing positions, I know for a fact, exist in both of those areas for sure. We actually have a couple of nurses on assignment in HBO right now. So which is awesome. Ooh, that's and awesome. that's through Trusted, which is cool. Yeah. <laughs> Um, awesome. And so that's, that's definitely something that I've seen. Uh, I think I've seen a few things about searching uh, for these jobs. Um, you know, if they don't say RN in the title, when they go to these companies' websites, how do they know to search? What should they search for, um, I guess, uh, to know if it's a nursing related position or not? Do you have any feedback on that? So I'll say this, um, two things. Number one, a lot of times when you go to companies' websites and, you know, you're searching their careers, um, they will break it down, you know, nursing, and they'll have then all these other tracks. And then sometimes you can click like the all button, 
One thing I would say, if they don't have just like a straight up healthcare professionals where all of the roles for healthcare professionals are, you may have to actually click that all. I know it's going to be a little bit more cumbersome and time consuming, but clicking that all will allow you to kind of go through all of those different jobs they have available. Now, if they have 500 plus jobs, then I know that that can get really specific. I mean, you know, really, really time consuming. But in that instance, what I would recommend that you do is to send a friendly professional email to the to the human resources department and tell them kind of what you're looking for and they may be able to actually send you the you know the jobs requisition numbers or something that may meet your criteria that you can actually go ahead and apply for and a lot of times even if it may not say that also these jobs of these organizations they're you know employee where you can go to apply for the job you can build a profile and you can put in certain things about yourself your skill set your background and they can start to match you and over time they will match you with certain jobs that meet you know the criteria or your skill set or things that you put in so that's definitely three different ways you can start to find those jobs even if you can't find where it says clear nurse. Yep. I even just put in healthcare innovation into mm -hmm. the into the search firm or the search title and then uh, sort it by location and, and just browsing through you'll see jobs you, sometimes you have to go in the job description but a lot of them want some clinical background and so you have to dive a little bit deeper they're not always on the surface called nurse xyz right. uh, but but yeah I mean terms like that or informatics or whatever you, you just type those in and start sorting through them and they're updated every day there's new stuff on there all the time. Thanks, Dan. Um, so just to address a few things, uh, we only offer traditional trauma nursing positions on our job platform through Trusted Health right now. Unfortunately, we do not offer any non-traditional jobs other than like the HBO randomly for here and there. So um, you'll see mostly travel nursing positions. And then uh, as far as telehealth travel job listings, um, we are seeing an increase in those, um, not on our platform, but we actually did a uh, event around telehealth jobs. Um, you can see it on our YouTube channel as well. If you just research Trust Health um, tell, uh, on YouTube. So uh, that is two questions. I I've seen a few other questions around best practices on LinkedIn. Do you have any best practices to share? Dan or Nicole? Become a subject matter expert. Here's how you become a subject matter expert. There's an opportunity for every single person that has a LinkedIn profile to share an article, right? You can actually write your own article and share it. You're going to find whatever area it is that you are known for, you want to be known for, your area of interest. You can share some information, some tips about that particular area, need to know X, Y, and Z, however you want to do that. You're going to then take, put that information in on the article, make sure that it is evidence-based, it's valid, and it's credible information, right? We're not just putting out information to put it in. Uh, but once you do that, you're then going to share that on your LinkedIn profile, and then you're going to make X3, 2 to three of your connections who you have built relationships with, can they now share your article that you published on your LinkedIn profile with their audience? That's going to start picking up some traction, right? And you're not going to do this just one time. You need to do this consistently at least two times a month. That is how you can start to get some traction on your LinkedIn profile, commenting on other people's information that they have also posted on LinkedIn is another way to start to get some traction on your LinkedIn profile. Those two have were profound for me when I very first started really and truly nurturing my LinkedIn profile, but as with anything consistency, you can't do it once and think that you're going to get all of this traction, it's not going to happen, right? You have to be consistent with it. So those are my two things. I'm sure Dan has some others to add. Yeah, I would say check out Nicole and I's LinkedIn as well. Um, I think we've tried to follow best practice there. Put up a picture and a professional yeah. picture. A prof yes. <laughs> People without pictures are not, you, you don't have a profile, you might as well not exist on the, on the platform. So put in a picture, um, put out, if you're looking for work, put in that, let's recruiter search for you, uh, build out your entire resume, your education, yes. and link to all those. So make sure when you type it in, it's actually the organization's name and it links you back because then it pulls you into that network. So um, take a look at our, our profiles, but you know, go to basics. Don't just put up your picture in one or two lines about you. Be intentional. This is your online presence, your online resume, and it really makes a difference the more there. And then like Nicole said, post regularly. I mean, at one point I was posting once a day for a good month, um, and that that created a ton of connections. And every, I would say every month, if not every week, I have some sort of opportunity that comes my way mm -hmm. through LinkedIn. 
All right. Well, I think that's that's a it's, we've actually reached our hour mark. Uh, it would be a shame not to mention that Trusted Health hires a lot of nurses. I am a social media manager at the moment for Trusted, so I took the non traditional route. Yeah. Um, and it was just through networking with Trusted Health and getting to know the people at the company and developing a relationship with them. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, it's been fun. It's been a wild ride, but you definitely can do it. And those those skills that you have the, at the bedside are definitely transferable. Um, so don't sell yourself short. You can definitely do this. Yeah. And if you're looking for a startup, AngelList is a great place to go. I know a lot of um, our employees and nurses have looked on uh, the site AngelList or Crunchbase. Um, and we're hiring. So um, go look at our jobs page because we have like three or four roles are open right now for nurses. So <laughs> yes, I was, I was going to just to be on, on the selfish side on the, on the community marketing team, we're actually hiring for a social media manager right now. Casey's moving over to a community lead with us, which we're so excited about. And those are the types of jobs where you can use your skills in ways that you probably yeah. didn't think to. So um, if you're interested, by all means, apply and send us a note. But um, we really appreciate you, Nicole, and you, Dan, for sharing this, this immense wealth awesome. of knowledge with us. This has been so helpful and illuminating. Yes. I mean, so much more to come. So if you're interested in learning more about Beyond the Bedside, um, career advancement through education, through um, fringe jobs, um, and then how to market your nursing skills, please join us for another event, and we will see you all very soon. Good night, everyone. Bye. Thank you.